Hi everyone and welcome to the Front Porch Knitter. My name's Lucy Ann and I am a knitter and crafter. Um, mostly I knit but I sew and I do cross stitch and I crochet occasionally and I do all kinds of other things so you'll see all those things here. This is my little corner of the universe where I talk about my knitting and um, all the fun knitty things. I'm going to show you um, this so you can see it and I got it for Mother's Day and I don't think I've shown it on here. My daughter-in-law made it. I need to hang it in a better spot, but I thought that was very lovely, very kind of her to do that. And uh, I really like it. It's, I'm, I'm glad that they um, know that my knitting is important enough to me that I would appreciate this. So yeah, a lot's happened. It's not been that long since I posted an episode. But it's been probably closer to six or eight weeks since I recorded. But the last episode, I had a really hard time uploading it, so it took quite a while. And that was a thing. So um, I was going to change this top because I was going to record earlier this morning. And um, then the neckline of this top was here. I've been wearing it all day because it is now about five o'clock in the afternoon on Sunday the 14th of July and as you can see the neck is really stretched out. I think I'm gonna have to put some el elastic in it um, but I love this top and it's really comfortable to wear it. This is um, my Tolsted, one of my Tolsted tees and you've seen it before but it's in a hemp fiber, hemp and cotton and it just stretches a lot throughout the day and to the point where I wouldn't want to wear it out because I feel like I'm always pulling on it so I think I'm going to put some black elastic through here which will help keep the neckline in place and if the rest of the body stretches a little bit that's okay it is um just the version with the um, yarn overs every so many rows and I do like it and it is comfortable to wear but the neck stretches quite badly. So I'm just gonna get some black elastic thread to s thread through there. And that'll make it much more, I'll be more comfortable wearing it out in public. Cause you know, now everyone can see my bra straps. I'm just gonna do this and then it won't be so obvious. But there's a lesson in that, right? So I just wanted you to be aware that you know what the fiber's gonna do and then you can go from there. So. Um, we have lots to talk about because I um, this episode does include some um, Grocery Girls Cruise Alaska cruise chat. So let's get started. Um, we'll do the cruise chat. Some of it will happen throughout as we look at things and I talk about things. And then the rest will be at the end because that's just better for you. So let's start with the finished objects. Um, I have quite a few because it's been a bit and because I had these little few little things that just needed to be done. Um, my Titty Gaga socks are now finished. They were almost completed. I just had a little, I think I had to finish the toe on one and that was it. So they are now done. This is um, a pattern by, I'm gonna do this so it's a little easier to see by Nancy Wheeler and this was her um, breast cancer fundraiser pattern for 2024 and you can see it's got a really interesting pattern down the front and a little bit in the back it's a very simple pattern easy to memorize <coughs> excuse me and um, fun to knit this yarn is um, small bird yarn which is a Vancouver Island dyer <coughs> excuse me and she I think I have mohair in my throat is what's happening this yarn is wool and mohair and it is her sock base there is no nylon in it um I'm interested to see how it wears because there's also no silk in it it is just wool and mohair so that'll be interesting to see but I really like the color it's been in my stash for a while and I do really like them and I love this pattern. The pattern is great. So that is finished object number one. 
The next finished object is also a Nancy Wheeler pattern. And these were all done, except I had to cut in the heels. This is the Nord sock. And it is a DK sock in um, Regia's DK base. It's Regia's six ply. And I will put the details of what the color is down below. But it is really nice to work with. And um, so this one, obviously I wasn't paying attention when I did them. This one has my, I think this one is the one that has Nancy's toe. And this one has the toe. I usually do. So Nancy's toe isn't as, mine is deep, uh, deeper. So you can see there's no difference really, except see this one is a bit wider and shallow. And this one is a bit deeper and narrower at the toe. Anyway, no one's going to notice that but me, but it happens. And I did a, um, afterthought heel in them because I, again, really easy memorizable pattern, um, simple to work on. And if you don't do the heel, you can just keep going, right? You just knit a tube that's the right length and then put the heel in later. And it has this nice pattern down the front. And again, just a little row of twisted slip stitches. I don't know if they're twisted, slip stitches for sure, in the back, which is so I think they might be, I might have, oh no, they look the same. Let's see, I might have twisted them on one sock and not on the other. So those are really nice. And yes, they're DK, but they're not that heavy. Like I for sure will be able to wear these in my um, blundstones. And no one's going to notice that I did two different toe decreases on them. But I'm excited to have those done as well. And then the third pair of finished socks um, are kind of special. These are, this is my birthday yarn from my lovely friend Heidi, and I think you will see it again in a bit. But it is Yarn Therapist, and I think the colorway is Red Hot, and it's two it comes as two fifty gram. Gains. Now, I didn't weigh them to see if they were 50 grams each, but that's what they're. And I had almost none left when I was done these. I did the heels and toe in it as well, so I still have another 50 grams. But I did on these a um, double cuff. So it is, I don't know if I'm going to write this up or not, but this has this amazing, look at that. That is, look at that cast on. It is the alternating cable cast on, and then the and then you double knit the cuff, so the cuff splits in two. See how it is two sided like that, but you knit both sides at the same time. So um, you um, knit. There's no pattern. I did this myself. You knit. Um, you knit one slip one one row. And the next row, you slip one, purl one, slip one, purl one, all the way around. And um, that creates making sure that your yarn isn't showing on the outside. So the yarn is always in the middle. It makes this. But what it does is it makes the cuff double thick. But because it isn't ribbed, and it, you have to cast on extra stitches and have a decrease row as well in order to make sure it's big enough. And because it isn't as stretchy as a ribbed cuff, you also have to do some extra rows in here. So I think I did six rounds before doing the heel. And it's just a straight up afterthought heel as well. And um, just the toe I always do. I don't know, it's the one I've always ever done. It's... Um, decrease on alternate rows to 18 stitches and then every row till eight or 10 stitches, you know, whatever looks right. But I really love this. It's very soft. I love the stripe pattern. Um, I love that I was able to do the bullseye heel. They are not, the heels are not the same. 
because I literally used every bit of the 50 grams to do this. So the heels are different, but I don't think anybody's gonna notice. I could have made them the same. But the re my reasoning for doing this was, um, one, my daughter likes wool socks in her work boots, but she likes them a little heavier around her ankle and she doesn't like tall socks. And so the double knitting does that. So I'm gonna get her to test these to see what she thinks. And I also like this, if I'm wearing something in my blundstones that I don't want it to show over the top, like if I'm wearing leggings in my blundstones but I don't want my socks to show, shorties are nice and this little bit of extra uh, around the ankle just gives you a little padding one to also help them stay up a little better. So that's just a me experimenting sock, but I really like them. And this yarn is so soft and I think this is a 7525, but I'm not positive. And my bag of tricks here, I think the, um, I think when we see that, I think I had the other skein of yarn in here and I might have the tag with that. So that's a finished object. Then if you watch the last episode, you will know that I had a few things I went, I was pretty confident I was gonna be able to finish for on the cruise. Well, you will all know <laughs> that um, as knitters, we start to talk a lot when we're all together. So we don't get as much knitting done when we're together as we think we will. But I did finish this and I did wear it on the cruise. This is my, this is the front. This is my Friday tee and I didn't block it, but I did wear it on the cruise. And there's a couple of spots where weirdly, I was worried about the navy blue bleeding, but it didn't, but the pink did. But I had it on the other day and I know it's there, but I don't know that anyone else will see it. And maybe when I wash it again, I never even thought to put, the water wasn't discolored, but it was pink. I mean, it was just the pink that transferred a little bit, but I do love wearing it. It is an incredibly comfortable t-shirt and um, it got lots of comments on the cruise. Um, I will say that I am a bold color choice knitter often as you guys have witnessed over the over time. And I do like color blocking as well. You've seen a few of those. This is Leo and Roxy, their sock yarn. I think it's natural sock even. And this is Plink, Pink Flamenco um, Glow Stick and Midnight Madness. And this is one of their three skein, they have some, there's some in their shop right now, I think three skein um, sweater kits. And it was perfect for the Friday tea. I had very little left. And if I, I threw the nuggets in this bag that is here beside me. So if I come to them, I will let you know. But it was very little. And as you can see, um, the bottom straight is not as long as the others. I could have rejigged the math to make them more equal but um it's unusual because these two stripes the green and the blue are the exact same number of rows but when you hold it like this the green looks much bigger the glow stick than the midnight madness and that's about the colors right it also they're the same size the pink and the navy and but if i had done this bottom one the same number of rows that it would have been too long so if I did it again, the same method, I would look at how many rows I needed total and rejig how many rows I did in each color. Cause the original pattern is um, in the images, she does a neutral and then a very narrow stripe of another color. And so it's not as, col it's not color blocked, it is striped. But I love this, it's the Friday Tea by Petite Knits. And um, the texture, everything about it is wonderful. So then the other one that I was sure I would get done was my Lulu slipover. 
I'll sew by petite knit. And this is done in um, Knit Picks Full of the Andes in the Roy Boss colorway. I love this slipover. I think I'm gonna get a ton of wear of it this fall. And these are the beautiful buttons I got at Knit City Toronto. And I will link the, the button vendor underneath. Their info is in this bag too. This bag, oh no, you know where their info is, I think, in my book. Let's see. No, it must be in the bag. Um, this bag is a bottomless pit right now. But I love this. And <clears throat> this double band here, I did not do actual button bands. I just did two bands and attached it with the button. Um, I'm never going to unbutton or button it. Like, so why faff around with that? So I just made, but this double knit band was what inspired me to do the double knitting cuff on those other socks. But I really love this and it blocked beautifully. And I'm pretty sure the original version has like a mock neck or a turtleneck. I just did a rolled edge. Um, I think that'll make it more versatile, easier to wear with more things. Like I could wear it with a a button down shirt or I could wear it with a turtleneck or even just a little scoop neck t-shirt or whatever underneath it but I do really like it and I love this color and this yarn blocked amazing I did wear my Friday tee on the cruise unblocked this I didn't get finished until I was home but I knit on it on the cruise and I do love it the next and final finished object, I think, I think, is my Adriata. Get the sparkle. You see it sparkle? Um, this is the Adriata by um, Hohilo Catelli. It is gorgeous. I just love it. It's got this beautiful lace panel down the side that is also around the edge of the sleeve. The sleeve is finished as you go, so you don't have to go back and do anything. And I just did a little rolled, this is what's called for in the pattern on this, a little rolled edge around the neck. And this is Yarn Indulgence um, Silk and Linen. So it's a linen and silk blend. And the composition is 65 silk, 35 linen. So it is very soft and drapey. And then I used um, King Cole Cosmo sequins. So it's a very thin strand. Now this is the sport weight silk and linen and the sequin. This pattern is a DK pattern. I just mucked around a bit. I can't even remember what needle size I used. Um, but I did get gauge and I really like it. I did not use the sequins in the ribbing or in the round neck just because, um, that was going to be, it, it was, it was going to be too much work to do ribbing with sequins. So I didn't want to do that. So I didn't. But I do love it. Now I need somewhere to wear it. But I think it'll look great with a pair of um, navy or black linen pants. Or a black skirt. And it's so pretty. <coughs> and I did have, I don't know how I'll weigh this, but I did have quite a bit left. I could have gone longer. I had both of the, I don't have the sequins up here, but both the sequins and the and the um, silk and linen, I had quite a bit left. So I could have made it longer if I needed to. I um, tried to record this earlier today outside on the front porch and I, I did a little bit and then I listened to it back, but it was too windy. All you could hear was the wind was like, and look at, see what I said? Oh, this is what I'm gonna be doing the whole time. You'll all be fine. There, better. 
So those are the things I finished. I was overly optimistic about what I was going to be able to finish on the cruise, but that's okay. Um, because I met lots of fun people and I did lots of fun things. So now I'm going to show you my works in progress. And you know what? Because I went on a bit of a finishing spree. Um, I only have two. I do have, I think if I were to go, I have a big basket with my project bags in it. I think I probably have one or two pair of socks over there that I haven't worked on in ages. And a sweater that I know I'm going to frog and restart. But I only have two knitting works in progress and one spinning work in progress because I am doing Tour de Fleece this year. So my knitting work in progress was an acquisition last time. And I was going to take it on the cruise as my sort of um, easy knit, but I ended up not taking it. So it is, this is the pattern from Me With Love. And I am using um, Mayak Baby Yak and Silk fingering, two different colors. So I'm probably in the middle of a row. And I am in the middle of a row, it's okay. <laughs> This is the two colors, and they are Indra and Violetta. They're the two colorways, two 25 gram skeins. Each 25 gram skeins ha skein has, let me find the tag, um, 116 meters or 127 yards. So that's pretty good um, yardage but it's just really simple and it's gonna be really nice and drapey when it's done. And it's just gonna be a fun, and it's so soft, like baby yak and silk. But I really like this color combo. I like the red and um, purple as well, which was the one pictured on the pattern example. Um, but they were out of the, can you see? The, it's not showing up really well, but um, they're out of the, they were out of the red when I bought my kit. And it was, um, I'm on a 3.25 mil needle. And, um, you know, it's one of those needles I wouldn't use on a sweater because it has a really bad cord on it that, but for knitting a small item flat, it's perfect. And I have it in my Dolphina box bag. I love these little bags. I have a couple of them. Let me just zip it up so you can see. Just a little cube. And she does such a great job like with the detail along the zipper. And it's got socks all over it. Nice handle. Easy to shove in a backpack or a bag. It's the perfect size. And actually what I've been doing is um, this is my um, top sale canvas and I think this one might be called Orlock. It's just a nice size bucket or tote. Let's see if I have the tag in here for it. Yes, it is the Orlock lined Oops. by Top Sale Canvas in New Brunswick. And this is another, because last summer I did two of them, and um, my daughter asked for one. She's in a wedding in a couple of weeks, so I thought that was a good reason to get it done. This is a, now hers is one pattern repeat deeper than the pattern calls for. Whitby Summer Shawl, and I will put in the description down below who it's by. It is actually, um, yesterday I was at, my husband's family has company over from Europe and we all got together for a barbecue. And um, this pattern, it repeats easy. Uh, this is my third one, knitting, so also that. Um, and I could um, knit and ch chat and be part of the conversation very easily. I took both of these projects with me because obviously the other one is even easy, even easier. So I could switch back and forth. I'm knitting this one in um, Barocco Remix. So this is the worsted weight version. Mine took 
I did my first one in Juniper Moon Cumulus and it took two skeins. And the second one, I can't, it was blue and white. I wore it for my son's wedding, but I can't remember what the yarn is, but it'll probably be in, if you go back through the note of the videos, you'll see it in the notes. And I think I only used two, but because I make, I'm making this one, a pattern repeat wider to get enough length I needed three balls but um, this is nylon cotton acrylic silk and linen so it's 27% cotton 10% silk 9% linen 24% acrylic and 30% nylon so it'll be like a workhorse yarn but it is very very soft and silk is quite warm and um, you know, you just want a little over the shoulders, keep you warm. Like you, she won't wear this in the pictures because the color um, for the wedding is she's the lightest shade of teal. They're a teal gradient, but um, she wanted a pink one. And you know, when they're standing around or if it's cooler in the evening or whatever, this will be perfectly fine. She just wouldn't want to wear it in the pictures, but I should be able to have it done. Well, as you can see, I. It's probably getting close to long enough now. I haven't measured it. And I haven't measured it against mine, which is what I'll do because mine is a good length. So I've been working on that and I'm not worried. Um, I'll have it done and blocked. No problem. All the confidence in the world. I'm not allowed to start anything else until this is done. That is one of the rules because there are this room one we're in my craft room this room is an absolute tip um i feel like this year this especially the last three or four months i have so many things to do and i haven't been home long enough to get anything done but that's okay because i did all kinds of fun things right so my only other work in progress that i have on the go oh so that one was in my top sale canvas by my friend um, Sadie Gagnon in New Brunswick and I'll link that below and this is in the lovely dollar store basket that I probably got something in at Christmas or I'm not sure but it is the perfect size for my Ewill Nano which is this very cute little tiny um, e-spinner that we talked about the battery pack for it and oh the singles that I have spun and I think I'm ready to ply so these three um and I don't have the label are like a red were a red and black braid Nancy, Christelle, don't look too close because I'm a very new spinner and I'm working very hard to just get that automatic sort of hand memory thing going on. And because I wanted, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it, maybe a cowl or something like that, but I want to go further. Um, I've spun up three um bobbins of just this plain natural colored merino the other one is a merino and nylon blend i'm pretty sure this fluff is um, very nice to spin i got it at i'm pretty sure it was at a i'm pretty sure this one came from um like a thrift store and the bag says it's merino. I can't tell. I, I'm not, one, I'm not a, a practiced enough spinner to be able to tell by feeling it. I know I could burn it and that would help me know if it melted or it smelled like burning hair, then I would know the difference. But you know what, I'm not too worried about it. It's practice for me. And I've been, um, I've been doing the Tour de Fleece, so I've been spinning every day. And my goal has been about half an hour um and I do have more of this downstairs but it's in a big bag 
it was one of those things that I saw it. I can't remember. It's some, I got, have some that's very similar. One was from a thrift store and one was from, um, you guys have seen the mystery mohair that I'm not sure is actually mohair. Um, a D stash, a lady had a bunch of stuff and she had it on Facebook and was just getting rid of it. So, but that's my spinning project. So I'm kind of excited to have a spinning project. It's um, a whole other hobby, right? Like, I don't know, I, I, keep, I keep seeing beautiful fluff when I'm out and about and I've picked up a few. And the trouble is it's like sock yarn. You pick up a braid, which is what I do with that black and white. Well, it's red, black and white, it's beautiful, but a single braid, a hundred, you're once again, you have a hundred grams and because I'm not a very good spinner, it's not even 100 grams of sock weight. It's, I don't know what it'll be when it's plied, but um, it'll be at, at least sport, maybe DK. And so I want it, if I'm gonna do anything, I need more yardage than that. So anyway, we'll figure it out. Um, I do not want my, um, I do not want, Anything in my stash to be so precious, I won't use it. So if I spin something, I wanna make sure I'm gonna knit with it. If I buy fluff, I wanna make sure I'm gonna spin it. If I buy yarn, I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna knit with it. Um, I just watched, um, I don't know if you watched Petra and uh, Natasha of Knit Inc, but I do watch them and um, they, like me, Mine is 12 years ago, but theirs was more, much more re recent, like this year. They had a house fire and um, they still don't know how, Petra doesn't know how much of her stash she lost. And when she said that at the end of the episode, um, use all the pretty things. And you guys have heard me talk before about China and those things. I don't want to own things that are just away. And that just reinforced it. You should be using the things you have. If, uh, yeah, if you've been around a while, welcome back. If you're new, go back through some of the, welcome, and go back through some of the older episodes and you'll be able to hear me talk about uh, various things that belong to my family or my, my parents or whoever that I now have and I'm just using because I think you should just use things. And um, I think that's pretty important. Um, I look at all the beautiful things my mom had put away and nobody ever used them. And so they don't mean anything to anybody. We don't have memories of them on Christmas tables or whatever, because everybody worried they were going to get broken. Well, you know what? If nobody uses them, they're no, that doesn't matter. And if they get used and get broken and people have amazing memories, that's better. So use your things, use your things. I'm going to look at my trusty book here to make sure I haven't missed anything. Oh, somewhere there is another finished object. And let me see if I can see it quickly. It's in this bottomless pit of a bag. <gasps> Found it. I also finished this on the cruise. This has been started um, and stopped and frogged and re-knit. I don't know how many times. I love this yarn. I think it's beautiful. I really like it. I have not been in the various projects I've tried it in. I have not loved the way the pooling has happened. But I do like it for this. It's just a Sophie scarf. The yarn is Handmaiden and it's um, their Cash Merino blend and I would have to look up the yarn to find. I don't even know if I have the label anymore. I've had it for so long. The colorway is Casba, and I did finish this on the cruise and I think I wore it a couple times. It is um, fingering, not DK. Um, the Sophie scarf is a DK pattern. I did this at a more open gauge because I wanted a more drapey scarf that and a little lighter weight that I might wear just like with a black turtleneck or inside my fall coat not necessarily my winter coat and the merino and cashmere it's going to be really warm but I do love it there's a theme right there's um it's got red and orange 
orangey black. And it was beautiful in the skein and it was, and I've done it at a few different gauges and I've tried it in different things and I keep frogging it because one, it is an amazing skein of yarn and I wanted it to be something I really loved that I was going to wear. And um, this is, this was the answer, but I think I, I don't even know if I used 50 grams. I probably have close to 50 grams left and I could probably make another one or maybe make a pair of penny gloves or something like that with it. But it is just a nice, and I did make it longer. Those are the modifications. Um, so I knit to the width I wanted and then did a section where I didn't, I neither increased or decreased and then decreased. Um, and if you have the pattern, you will, that will make sense. But it does have this nice eye cord edge. And I do like it. And I am glad I finished it. And I'm glad I checked my notes so I didn't find it at the end. But yeah, it was perfect for um, when we were away. It was not that cold. It was actually quite nice. But we did have a couple of rainy days. So it was nice to have something at your throat. And um, for sure to know more about the cruise, the best place for me. I posted most days. I posted... Um, like a diary of what we did that day so have a look at that um because i'm not going to go through day by day what we did but that was the that was what happened so i'm going to do i'm going to talk about the cruise while talking about the acquisitions from the cruise because i think that is what makes the most sense um it was absolutely amazing. That's all I can say. For me, everyone always, you know, lots of people have said, oh, what was the highlight? What was the highlight? The highlight was the people. There is nothing like being with, um, including instructors and all the participants. There was, I think we were pretty much a hundred knitters. There is nothing like being together with a hundred knitters. And, um, it was so much fun. And I met so many amazing people and I have people um, now who I know, like if I was ever in their neighborhood, I could sh give them a shout and say, Hey, I'm going to be anywhere from Australia, all across the U S Europe. Um, do you have time to sit and have a coffee and a knit? Can we get together and knit? And, um, I think that would be just amazing. Um, and I will share some of the um other podcasters who were on the trip that I know of there might be others who I don't know who were podcasters who were on the trip but I will post the ones I know so you can see their perspective as well because we every one of us had a different trip we um spent a lot of time together knitting but we also spent a lot of time doing our own thing with our some of people brought their spouse I went with my friend Heidi um so we had time to do our thing and then formal time together and then informal time together. And all that was perfect because it meant we weren't in each other's pockets all the time, but we did get to make some amazing friendships and meet some pretty amazing people. So that was pretty cool. Um, we could have been at a Motel 6 somewhere on a back road all together knitting. <laughs> And we probably would have had an amazing time because there's nothing like being with knitting friends. But put that on a beautiful ship and um, with beautiful amenities and amazing food and in a beautiful setting, like going up the Pacific Northwest to from Seattle to, to Alaska. And um, that just amplifies the experience like a million times. It was it was absolutely amazing. And um it's not one of those things where I go, oh, I've done that, so I don't need to do it again. I would do it in a minute if money was no object and time was no object, but you guys know my life and time is a pretty precious commodity in my world, so yeah. So we started the trip, we went up early. Heidi and I, uh, it took us all day to get there, basically because Heidi left from New Brunswick and I met her in Toronto. And we got to Seattle fairly late that evening. Um, like it was 9.30 Seattle time, which is 
three hours and four hours later for us on the Wednesday. So we sort of used Thursday as we got up whenever we were ready and uh, we did some wandering around and we found a wool shop and on the very first day we found a person who was going on the cruise with us because she was also in the yarn shop and I cannot believe the number of women who were traveling alone like so brave <laughs> so brave um I mean I would have gone alone but it was more fun with Heidi and um that was Diane and hi Diane if you're watching and um she just happened to say something and Heidi and I asked her if she was going on the knitting cruise with the grocery girls and she said yes and then we hung out together and we went for coffee and we arranged to meet up when we were going out the next day and we yeah and it turned out her um stateroom was right beside us on the ship which was perfect and um she's an amazing knitter and wow um she's also fast a fast and much faster knitter than I am she's done some beautiful things but that was really cool. And um, yeah, so that's how we spent our Thursday. We had an amazing meatball sandwich um, in Pike Place Market and we just grabbed a light, I don't know, I don't even know if we ate supper. We didn't eat very much if we did. We just grabbed a light supper because um, the meatball sandwich was pretty great. We tootled around um, Pike Place Market. Oh, we went to Target because there was a Target downtown Seattle, amazing, who wouldn't have guessed. And we ran into Jody Brown and Tracy Miller and their daughters in the Target, which is pretty cool. <laughs> so we, you know, we had a chat with them. It was really fun. It's, um, it is really like running into your best friends everywhere. When you're, when there's a hundred like-minded people in a city, it's interesting. I mean, there'd be more because there are more knitters in Seattle than just us. But it was interesting how we would bump into each other just organically out in the community, which was kind of cool. So, yeah, we had a little chat with them at the Target before we went off to do whatever our next thing was we were going to do that day. And we walked a lot. It was very walkable. It was great. And that was the Thursday. And then the Friday morning, we were all getting together and meeting at um, the Char Charter House Hotel, which is where everyone else was staying. Well, not everyone, but lots of people were staying there. It was the the hotel of the tour. But we, um, Heidi and I stayed at um, a travel lodge. Just We were only a few blocks away, but it just, um, you know, left more money for yarn, which is important to both of us so that was fine and also because we were staying extra days um you know we had two extra nights than most people had so we wanted to make sure that um we didn't want to spend the money on a hotel we would rather spend the money on the other more fun important things of the trip so and on the friday um beth mcdonald stone hi beth if you watch um threw out there watch her podcast she's got some she did a post cruise podcast as well and just watch it anyways because she's an amazing designer as well and um yeah she had put on our Facebook group I'm planning to go to Bainbridge Island anybody else want to go and a bunch of us said well Heidi and I were planning on doing that too so we said yes we were gonna go and so we decided we'd all go together and then there's more and more people said yes and eventually we were probably 25 or 30 people maybe more who were going and uh, we took most of us took the 1040 ferry from Seattle to Bainbridge Island and um, Beth had called ahead to let the stores know we were coming because you know you don't want 50 women you know these are stores who are busy that are busy to start with but an extra 50 hardcore knitters showing up might mean they needed more staff or whatever but they were most gracious and um, they both had refreshments for us and gave us a very warm welcome and discounts and it was just amazing and and what a beautiful place Bainbridge Island is and to have these two beautiful knit shops just a barely a block from each other um, the Lamb and Kid and La Mercerie and they are as different as two yarn shops could be both amazing and 
lovely people and so kind and so helpful and beautiful. The shops were both impeccably beautiful. And um, there's some pictures on my Instagram. Pop over there. I'm not going to bother putting in pictures here. Um, but if you pop over to Instagram and uh, at the front porch knitter, you will um, see photos from our day at those two shops. And so our pre-cruise shopping, um, I, I don't, especially the lamb and kid, like, thank goodness they had a lot of samples. I'm just going to throw this out there. If you are a yarn store owner, um, samples sell things. Absolutely. I got, they had this beautiful saltier tea on a mannequin done in, this is their cottage fingering and it's merino, silk, linen, and cotton. 50% merino, 20 linen, 15 silk, and 15 cotton. It is so soft and this beautiful, the colorway is nautical, is what it's called, but it's very much um, a denim -y shade. And our new friend Diane, she bought yarn to make one of these as well. And um, I have a saltier. Do I need a second saltier? I'm not sure, but that one looked pretty nice. And this yarn is gorgeous. And I could decide to do something else with it. There is um, 435 yards in here, but this is beautiful. And so that was my first purchase there. And then because it is lamb and kid, I need to find a spot to put all these things. Um, if you um, follow them on Instagram or have watched other podcasters, they're always talking about their birdie. Um, this is their, so this one was their lamb and kid label. And this is their diamond lane label, both um, in-house labels for them. And this is their birdie DK and the colorway is paisley. And it is, 90% alpaca, 10% silk, 246 yards per 100 grams. It's not a gorgeous color. And their birdie um, bases are all these fluff bases. And they have, um, I, there's one that's thicker than this, that's big birdie. And then there's birdie, which is more like a lace fingering weight. And then this one, which is the birdie DK. It is gorgeous. It is so soft. I'm trying to find a single strand of it so you can sort of see how thick it is. It is absolutely beautiful. I think the best thing about popping in there, I did only get three skeins of yarn. There were other people who um, were buying multiple sweater quantities. I, For me, it was being able to see it and touch it. So when I do go online to order, I have a better idea of what I'm getting. Um, the Canadian dollar is so bad right now that ordering American yarns is not easy, but I'm really glad that I was there to touch and feel. So at least when I do go to order, I'm feeling more confident about what I'm going to get. And uh, it, when you're on holidays, if you get a chance to go to any yarn shop and see any it doesn't even matter if you're not planning to buy because sometimes when we're on holidays we can't because we don't have the suitcase space or whatever um but going and seeing all the different yarns the same thing for when we were at other yarn shops sometimes it was just about being able to touch and and feel and look at the color interpretations and those kinds of things of different yarns because the computer's not always the best way to do that, but I'm pretty excited. I have no idea. This, this was absolutely, you're at a, at the Lamb and Kid, you should buy something on their birdie base. I have no plan for it at all. At least the other one I know I want to do a saltier or similar t-shirt, but it, I do love this. So that was, those were my Lamb and Kid purchases. And they had a whole spread on for us of, um, snacks and drinks and beautiful places to sit and to visit. Some of their regular customers were there. Um, apparently there were people who were 
um, at both yarn shops who were um, begging to be allowed to knit because we were all coming. Because you have to remember, in our group were Beth McDonald Stone, who um, she bought, she's designing with the yarn she bought at the Lamb and Kid right now. Um, Hohi Locatelli, who I believe uh, was working on a design from the Lamb and Kid while we were um, traveling. And um, I don't know if Alexis and, I don't think Alexis and Emily from Tin Can Knits, they, or Alexa and Emily from Tin Can Knits, I don't think they came to the Lamb and Kid with us. I don't think they got in until later. And um, Jody and Tracy, the grocery girls were there. Plus all the, this group of women who, are avid knitters and who love fiber and who are more than just um we're we're I guess we're more than just recre <laughs> more than just recreational knitters I don't are we obsessed knitters most of us probably were obsessed knitters um Everyone I would say in that group would be classed as an adventurous knitter for sure. Like they would try different fibers and different designers and different, and they would have collect, there were some fairly new knitters, but interestingly, everyone would have had a fair amount of experience. So it was really cool for us to all be there. And it was also cool to get, see all the samples in the stores and all those things. And, and to be able to work together to be able to make choices of what we would like. One moment. Yes. Sorry for the, you probably don't even know what happened. There was a brief interruption. Um, I just got a request to go play games with my son and his girlfriend. So we're um, in the sort of home stretch of all of these goodies. So we'll go from there. So the next thing I got, so the next place we went to was La Mercerie. Also amazing, also unbelievably welcoming, beautiful store, lots of European brands, which was really cool because some of them were like, I think they have every color of some of the Knitting for Olive line. Um, and just to be able to see it was really cool because um, I do know a, a few stores here in Canada, but none of them are close to me. So to be able to see all that was really great. I picked up two yarns and they again they had a color work um cowl done in these this is loft which is brooklyn tweeds american targi and columbia wool in the colorway cast iron you can see sort of a tweedy gray and this is la mercerie's um pale september this is their spin cycle color and i thought these two would make a nice color work cowl so I got the two of those um this is two the spin cycle is 200 yards and uh I'm pretty sure 50, I don't know how many grams it is it's 200 yards sport weight and the loft Brooklyn Tweed loft is um 275 yards and it's a fingering weight woolen spun so that's going to be something lovely and then just as I was paying and she saw the girl saw my credit card she goes you're Lucy Ann and on the counter was a post-it note that said happy birthday Lucy Ann and Heidi and I my birthday's the end of May and Heidi's is the end of June our friend Robin from um Close Knit Friends Yarn Shop in New Brunswick, who we do lots of things with, she'd left a gift card for each of us. She'd called and bought us each a gift card at La Mercerie to buy yarn for ourselves. So I purchased these with my special money. This is um, Woolberry Fiber Co. And this is their berry decay base and the color is a raspberry cordial 
And if you are a um, Anne of Green Gables fan, you know that Raspberry Cordial is an Anne of Green Gables re reference. And I picked up a skein of their um, Surrey Alpaca. So 65 Surrey Alpaca, 35 Silk, and this is Flower Farm. They go together quite nicely. So I'm going to make myself something special with these two. I'm not exactly sure what yet, but it will be special. And that was such a sweet thing. What a great idea to give a friend who you know is traveling and is going to be out and about doing those kinds of things. So then um, we went back, we had a lovely dinner, and I think there's some pictures of that dinner on the on my Instagram if you want to see more. Um, Beth McDonald Stone and then Heidi and I and I think our friend Diane was there and there was probably eight or nine other people. It was just perfect. We were at the Charter House at the Patagon, which is a lovely restaurant. And we had a lovely meal. It was nice to sit and chat and visit with people. Hi, Sherry. Hi, Wendy. I can't remember who else was at the table without looking at the pictures. But it was just so nice to be able to do that. And, um, yeah, we tried to get, we got to bed at a decent time on Friday evening because we, um, Heidi and I wanted to board the ship as soon as we were able to. We actually, um, set ourselves up to get on ahead of the group. Everybody else was meeting and going over, I think, around 11 or 1130. We actually left our hotel at 10 or 10.30, so we were there. The embarkation process is so slick. We uh, zipped right through. I think we were a bit ahead of the curve, which was good. Our stateroom was ready when we got there, which was amazing because, um, you know, they only have a couple of hours to turn the rooms around. And um, Heidi and I got ourselves some lunch on board and some snacks, and then we went and registered and got our amazing goodie bags and I know my name tag is here oh here's my name tag we got our name tags and the information about who we were having dinner with every day because we did switch up our dinner but our beautiful um, grocery Girls Knit Alaska bags, which are just amazing. And they were filled with good, yummy things. I'll put that there. We got um, Frankie Gay Gray Fibers. This is Seize the Day sock set, as in S-E-A-S, -S, the day. And 7525 DK and two 20 gram minis. One has Stellina. I don't know if you can see that. So I'm going to make something amazing with that. We got um, sock ruler, a Grocery Girls Knit Alaska, I can't really see from far away, but it's there, it says right there, notebook, which is nice to have a notebook to um, keep track of things. We got these cute little, I'm going to put mine on a bag, little danglers mine says frog that I can clip on a bag some um, a little notions silicone notions pouch also says grocery girls knit Alaska a tape measure never have too many of those Fun pom-poms. There's a couple sets in here. These are Yarn Bowler, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, Yarn Bowler pom-poms and stitch markers. They're so cute. And we had a beautiful name tag, which I have no idea. I put my I put mine in that safe place. And I don't lie, I know we all have it. That is the place where you put things away and you find them three years from now 
and go, oh, that was a smart place to put that. But I have torn, I found other things today that I've misplaced, but I can't find my name tag. It's a beautiful little wooden name tag. If you check out the other makers or other podcasters, you'll see theirs. Mine is in a safe place. And we got a Grocery Girls Knit Alaska sticker. And there might have been other things in here that I already used. I can't remember, but it was an amazing loot bag. And I love the, the logo that was made. So those were all things we got. And I, I didn't get this at the time, but I did get it from, um, let me see. Is it? I did not look inside this bag. Maybe this is where it is. Nope. I, I got this cute little happy birthday bag. My birthday was while we were on the cruise. And Tracy and Jody gave me this very cute. Everyone who had a birthday on the cruise got uh, Grocery Girls Knit Alaska mugs. So now I can use mine because I've shown it to you. It's pretty exciting. I So that was our my swag. I am going to pause for a bit. You guys will not really notice it, but I'm going to go play some board games with my kids because they asked and I can and it's important to me. So I'm going to finish this up in a little bit. We'll talk to you later. Hi, all. I'm back. It's a couple hours later. I have changed my shirt and we've played some board games. My son's girlfriend um, recently had surgery and she's very bored. So we're trying to keep her spirits up because uh, she's quite incapacitated at the moment. On mend, but incapacitated. So let's get back to it. So that was the pre-cruise and our swag bag that we talked about. So the next thing is we also got in our bag our little um, program and they did things very, very well. The company that organized this way were amazing. We had a welcome reception on the first day and we sort of had an area of the ship called the crow's nest, which is in the bow at one of the topmost levels and deck 11. And that area, there was a section of it, um, most afternoons for a couple of hours. We had a couple of big group gatherings there and it was beautiful. Lots of nice chairs, places to sit if you like to knit at a table. There were tables. Um, so we had dinner. We had a, a get together up there at 6.30, dinner at 7.30. And if you've never cruised before, dinner on cruise ships is pretty amazing. And um, Heidi and I actually went to the dining room some days for breakfast and lunch as well as dinner, which you can do. And um, it was very good. I mean, if you like the cafeteria style, absolutely. That's an okay thing to do too. But whatever floats your boat, whatever floats your boat. So that was Saturday. Sunday, we um, had a get together in the morning at 830. And then we broke off into our classes. Um, I was in the yellow group. My badge was, and Heidi and I were both in it, our badges were yellow. So on the Sunday morning, we had um, our Hohe class. And Hohe's class was, let me find the, do I have the, it was her um, design your own drop shoulder cardigan. It was amazing. She had worksheets in here. So she measured us. It has very detailed how to do your, um, how to measure for your armhole depth and everything you need to know to design your own. And there, some people have theirs done already. They're beautiful. Um, I'm still in the thinking phase of doing mine. So I haven't started it yet, but um, I have the yarn and I have some great ideas and I have made, um, not it's it was a pre-cruise acquisition and we may have talked about it in the last episode i can't remember if i had it already but i got a stitch dictionary to help me make some decisions about what i want to do with it i i have some ideas already of what i think i'm going to do but this will um for some inspiration that will be good 
and um, all of the instructors were amazingly generous with their time, um, with pattern support, giving us free patterns, which was also pretty amazing. Um, it was just unbelievable. So um, that was the, and then we had the other, we were divided in thirds. So one group was with um, the grocery girls doing their sock talk presentation. And the other group was with um, Alexa and Emily doing their strange brew presentation. So that was really great. And then we had knitting circle and then we have dinner. And um, one night we rotated our tables and one night each, we each had dinner with um, one of the instructors. We each had one night where they were at our table. And um, Heidi and I had um, Jody and Tracy was our, in quotation marks, celebrity dinner night. And it was on the Sunday that we had dinner with them. So that was really nice. On Monday, first thing in the morning, the 27th, we had workshops from 9 till noon. And then we docked in Juneau. So we had our second workshop, which was Tracy and Jody, And we docked in Juneau at around 1. And we were there till 10 p.m. And... Um, We had a great evening. Heidi and I went out for dinner at one of the specialty restaurants that night and so had something a little extra special, which was nice. And um, But in town, we did some shopping. And it was amazing. In almost every port we were in, there was a yarn shop or a craft shop. And they were so welcoming. And we sort of let them know, that the organizing group let them know ahead of time we were coming because just for them to be prepared. So our first, I'm just going to move this over here so it's easier for me to dig in. Our first stop was um, our in Juno. The yarn shop was called um, Changing Tides, and I will link them down below. And it was a combination, let me see what else I've got in here. Um, quilt shop and yarn shop. And it was quite near the port. It was easy to walk to. Um, Juno was a lovely city. If you go to my Instagram, as I've said before, you'll see pictures of what we did that day and all the things we saw. So this is the yarn I bought. I bought four, it is, if I line it up right, it's kind of a fade. I think it sort of goes like, I think we decided it goes like, like this. I don't know, I'd have to look at it better. There's a way to make it work as a fade. And these are by a company called Juno Woolies. So they're hand dyed in Juno. And um, hand spun. It says hand dyed and hand spun in Juno. And they are 50 grams, 219 yards. This one is Sitka Spruce. This one is Aurora. You can see that for sure. This one is um, Winter Peaks. And this one is Winter Sky. So they're really great colors and they feel very soft. And uh, I think I already said 100% superwash merino. So I picked up those and it was also a quilt shop. So I decided I wanted to make myself a bag as a keepsake. So uh, this is, I can't remember, Maybe a quarter yard of this batik fabric, which I really liked, with lots of whales on it. And then I just got this um, sort of a watery print for the lining or to coordinate with it. They go really nicely together. 
And I thought, and they gave us a discount and I was very happy. And then we get to the checkout and they have a goodie bag for us. And in our goodie bag is a mini and um, a jewel fastener. It's called um, Renaissance Hinge. And I have one of these already in black. But it's really nice for a, a cardigan or a, a, like I, so I use mine on my open vest a lot. And what you do is you screw them through your knitwear and take it off to wash, obviously. And then it snaps open and close. And um, yeah, I already have one, so I... I really like it, so I'm happy. Mine is black, so it's nice to have a brown one now. But that was very generous of them to give those to us. And, um, you know, they didn't have to do that. It was very nice, so that was kind of cool. And so that was our day in Juneau. Um, Heidi and I purposefully chose not to take a lot of excursions. Um, we both think we'll probably go back again another time with our... Um, husbands and so you know we just sort of wandered around the towns and checked them out and we were glad we did that so then the next day the Tuesday we were in Icy Straight Point was the the um, port we were going to but all through the day we were in Glacier Bay National Park and um, it was pretty amazing. They only allow two ships in per day, one ship at a time. So we were in and there was a ranger on board um, doing a, uh, like a commentary of what we were seeing. We, uh, Heidi and I did most of it from our um, deck. We... We had a little veranda with a place to sit and we were there. We did go up to the bow for a little while and watch from there. And you could hear the on the speaker system all over the commentary and it was kind of cool. And we saw glaciers and um, otters and other things, other wildlife in the, like birds and things flying around. And um, we did not see, there is one of the bigger, one of the main glaciers in the park is an active glacier in that it's growing and and it's moving still. Um, some people did get to see a hunk fall off. They call that calving. We didn't see it calving, but we saw the hunks floating around. So that was kind of cool. And then um, later in the day, they went. We got like at six p.m. We went into the port at Icy Street Point. Um, we didn't even get off the ship for that one. It's was, um, there wasn't a lot, if you didn't have an excursion, there wasn't a lot to see right in the town and it was later in the evening. So we opted to stay on board and um, enjoyed our evening and relaxed a little bit. On the Wednesday, we were in port in Sitka from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. And in Sitka, we had booked a um an excursion we did uh food lovers tour i guess it was and among other things we went to a local brewery we wandered around quite a bit in the town it was quite an interesting little town we um went into a couple of shops and Sitka is very interesting in that they um, have rules about who can own shops in the town. So right at the harbor, there were, um, if you've ever been on a cruise, you know that every port has the same stores. Like there are certain international stores that are in every port and they were all there. But in the town itself, you you to be a resident of Sitka to own a business in the town, which is kind of cool. And um, one of the interesting facts is there's only something, I think he said there were 14 miles of roads, but there were also 14 miles of boat slips. 
places to park your boat. <laughs> so quite interesting. And um, we tasted reindeer and we had um, highly influenced by the um, Russian cuisine that had been there earlier on. So we had some of that on our little tour. We tasted with some seafood. It was just, it, it was interesting. And the guide was really good. And he was obviously a local and, you know, he was funny and told stories. And, and the nice thing was we also met people who were on the cruise, but not part of our tour group, which meant we um, had a chance to meet different people, which I think is, is a good thing, right? And we hung out with them and, and it was quite good. So we enjoyed our day in Sitka. And then Thursday we were in Ketchikan and Ketchikan has two yarn stores. Let me see if I can find my goodies from there. So the first yarn shop we went to in Ketchikan was called Untangled Fiber. And they gave us a discount on several different things. And they also gave us some patterns and just, they opened early because we were there, like we were in port at 7 a.m. till 1. They opened at 7.30 so we could get in. Lovely people, um, husband and wife team. Uh, I think he maybe had another job, but he had taken the day off and, um, or the morning off to help out in the, in the shop, which was very nice. They gave us a discount and yeah, it was just, you know, very nice, very lovely people. I picked up this skein of, uh, what is it? 75% ultra fine superwash, 15% nylon and 10% Stellina. I don't know if you can see the, see the sparkle. Look at that. And this is a Christmas yarn. And the, I'm trying to find the colorway name. Merry Christmas. It's just called Merry Christmas. So I got that. And I got, this is 100% Rambouillet. And the colorway is Tapestry Louis the Fourth Tapestry. So I picked up that. And they were both hand dyed. Um, actually, I'm pretty sure by the owner of the store. But they had lots of other yarns in there and, and lots of samples. And it was quite nice. And it was a bit of a walk to get there. Uh, it probably took us 20 or 25 minutes to walk there. But that's okay. That's kind of fun. So then... We went to the next shop and I'm trying, trying to remember what the shop was called. And I can't remember. If I find it, I will put that down below. You know how it works. Hit the more and hit the more again and you'll find it. But they had some yarns. So they had yarns by Gray Owl Fibers, which, no, LittleGraySheep.co. Little Gray Sheep is a British yarn dyer. But her sister, I think it is, lives in Ketchikan. And so she spends a fair amount of time there. So she has a separate collection called Fisher Girl Yarns Ketchikan, Ketchikan that um, she dies. So it says here, in the early 90s, a young English girl kayaked up the inland passage to Ketchikan and fell in love with its wild beauty. To keep warm in the harsh Alaskan winters, Kim kept cozy in the fabulous fiber farmed in her homeland by her younger sister. The sisters were inspired by the color palette of the, their surroundings and are committed to 
farming ethically and knitting beautifully. It's 98% British wool, 2% British alpaca, and the little gray sheep. So one sister lives in Alaska, one sister lives in Great Britain. And I picked up two of these mini skein sets, which are to make um, the bear paw beanie. And I don't have a picture of the beanie, and this has the, the um, chart on it, so I don't wanna show you that because it is a paid for pattern. But I thought that was a cool story. And from these, this is two, so there are 100 grams in each one. So I should be able to get three hats probably with a little fancy finagling from the two sets. But I thought that was a very cool story. And the two colorways I got are Bear Paws on the Boardwalk and the Married Man's Trail, which are... Um, things about Ketchikan. So that's kind of cool. So that was that day. And I also got that day for my Christmas tree, a little sea otter. Now I'm very sad to say that, nope, this one is made in Alaska. So I searched to find something made in Alaska because almost everything was, you know, you know where it was all made. But I wanted to have a made in Alaska ornament, so I had this little felt sea otter, and he'll go on our Christmas tree in a place of pride. We, um, I have ornaments from all kinds of places. I almost always get a Christmas ornament when I travel. So we were in port there just till noon. No, I lied. One. And in the afternoon, we had a discussion panel with all of the instructors together, which was really nice. And then on Friday morning, we had our last workshop and Friday was my birthday. So um, I hadn't really told very many people and then some people found out. So that was kind of fun. It's a fun way to spend your birthday with a whole lot of knitting people. Either way, it was great. And um, we, on Friday evening at eight, we were in Victoria. So, um, you know, everyone's Victoria's, you know, it's a nice Canadian city. I'd actually never been to Victoria before. That was my first time going to Victoria. And, um, but I knew that there was a yarn shop there called the Beehive. Oh, I found money in my bag called the Beehive Yarn Shop. And I just, I really wanted to go there. So I contacted them prior to the cruise because no one had actually talked about them being a point to stop at. And um, Connect reached out to Jody and said, hey, can, Jody and Tracy and said, hey, you want to connect with the shop? Because um, typically they would be closed by eight o'clock on a Friday. And like, it's not a big demand for yarn shopping after 8 p.m. But they opened their shop and came in and we had to be back on board, I think at, what time? We were there, 11.59. We had to be out of the port by midnight. That's probably something to do with the fees. So we had to be back on board by 11 or 11.30. And so they opened for us at 8. We got priority disembarkation. Disembarkation? getting off. That means getting off. We had priority getting off the boat. And um, we went straight to the taxi queues and went straight over there. And they were like so excited for us to be there. And it was such a cute little store. And we didn't, about probably about half of us went to that shop. I mean, we didn't see as much of Victoria, but you know what? I know I can go to Victoria another time. I'm it's more fun yarn shopping with a bunch of knitters. Like that is such a cool thing. And the shop is the Beehive Wool Shop. And I got this very cute project bag. And again, they had a sample um, of Hohe's Cedar Top Sweater. I can't remember. Cedar. Anyways. And... Um, I've knit one and I love mine. Mine is in cotton and 
this one is also a cotton yarn. It is air blown cotton. It's called Cotton Feathers. It is Gathering Yarns. It's Canadian. The Harvest is here. Cotton Feathers. I'm trying to find out if there's any more information about it. Uh, 260 meters for 100 grams. Milled in Italy. Color Navy. Anyways, I got a sweater's quantity of that um, in navy blue to make a cedar. Another cedar. And I think that will be very nice. I'm, yeah, so that's what I got. And we got back on and uh, it was pretty late at night. We had to make sure we had to have our um, suitcases and everything outside our rooms by midnight. So by the time we got everything organized and out um, and went to bed, we opted to get off not as late as possible, but sort of middle of the time we could get off the ship the next day um, because we had uh, we were renting a car because we didn't fly out until like 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock that night so we had about 10 or 12 hours to fill so we could have done that just puttering around Seattle and we looked at the option of doing some tour, a tour in Seattle. And um, it was going to cost us a couple hundred dollars each American to do any of the tours. And they were still going to have us at the airport like 10 hours before our flight. We just really didn't want to do that. So we um, decided we were going to rent a car and we drove up to... Bellingham, Washington. And do you know what's in Bellingham, Washington? Well, there's a couple of things in Bellingham, Washington. The first shop we went to was um, Apple Yarns. And I picked up, it's a very lovely little shop. Um, the ladies who worked there were amazing. Like, there's just no other word for it. They were just absolutely amazing. And um, I picked up... Here's their card, but I'll link everything down below. Look at this. Look at their card. It says... Love on it. And, you know, they had yarn balm trees outside and... All kinds of cool things. Anyways, I picked up this skein of Emma's Yarn. Crazy, beautiful color. Simply Spectacular DK in the Plant Lady colorway. I don't know too much about Emma, except that she, cool, she dyes cool yarn. And uh, 255 yards per 100 grams. 80, 75, 25 merino nylon and I picked up some little minis these are I think they're all uh, worsted yep and let's see I'm trying to figure out what's the name and what's the so they're called apple crisps I don't know if they have if I know what the colorways are I don't. It doesn't have the colorways on here. But they're um actually there is not a lot of information on here. 43 yards each. And I picked these three colors. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with them, but I figured there was something we could do with them. And they would be fun. The other thing that's in um, Bellingham, Washington, is Spin Cycle. So I, 
oh, talk about overwhelming. Like I could have picked a million things, but I chose these two versions of Happy Pill. They're each 200 yards, roughly sport weight. And they're, so this is the cool thing about them. These don't look the same, but they are the same colorway. So it's the same combinations of colors just combined in different ways. But I'm probably going to use it in a color work yoke, so that's okay. So I got those. That's the spin cycle I bought. And then we went to, oh, what was the other shop's name? North. Northern something, north something. Oh, Northwestern. I will link it down below. Should never rely on me for, I should have written it down. And I didn't. Yeah, I don't see it here. Anyways, I will. We went out for a lovely dinner. This was hand dyed in Bellingham, Washington. It is Leviathan Fibers, and it's 100% Polworth DK weight. And I did pick up some things thinking um, I'm planning to do a Jethro, and so some of these could just go into it, you know. And so we picked that up. Um, we had lunch with some other friends who, they were driving on to Vancouver. They were from, I guess, sort of the Midwest, but they were driving on to Vancouver. But we uh, met up with them in Bellingham and had lunch and then hit, we, Heidi and I went to Apple on our own and we went to the other two shops with the rest of the girls. And we had just a scream of an afternoon. Like it was just so much fun to hang out with, um, Kim and who is a hoot and her friends one of whom was on the cruise with us whose name has just left my brain but I'll think of it and the other one who uh, met up with them and was doing the trip up to Vancouver for a few days like I said it is always fun to hang out with Yarny friends and it was my birthday and you guys have all heard me talk about my friend Heidi and she probably knows my nittiness more than anybody else. And she is the one who gave me this beautiful, the, you saw the socks knit up in half of it. This is the Yarn um, Therapist 8020. And it is red hotness and gray is the colorway. And this is what it looks in the skein. You saw it knit up already. And I will link Jen down below, the yarn therapist. She is pretty amazing. It is 130 grams, 483 meters, 528 yards. So it's a good amount of, um, a pretty significant amount of yarn. So she gave me that, a lovely um, hand cream. And who doesn't need Patty Lyons Knitting Bag of Tricks? And I didn't have it yet. So that was very nice. And a beautiful card, which is in here too. This is like a whole bag of tricks. I'm glad she thinks so. <laughs> it makes me feel good. So that was fun. And then we flew home in the middle of the night. And then that was Sunday night, Sunday we get, so we left Saturday night, we get home Sunday early morning. Um, in typical stupid family fashion, I was landing at Terminal 1 in Toronto as my husband was going through security at Terminal 3 to go on a work trip. So I didn't even see him when I got home and um, I did lots of running around. Sunday I was done, Monday I did some running around and Tuesday morning, I got up and drove to New Brunswick because apparently I do that a lot because I had a work thing on the following weekend. And, um, you know, New Brunswick was New Brunswick. It was its usual self. 
I spent some time with one of my cousins, and I have to show you this because you guys will think it's so cute. Um, when my he does a lot of woodworking, like he when my husband and I got married, when John and I got married, he gave us a beautiful set of nesting tables that he had made. And when we had our oldest daughter, he gave us a little duck just like this one. And when it when it moves the wings, like when you pull it, the wings. This has, this would never pass safety regulations. This string would be too long, but you know, supervise your children. And he, he makes them by hand and they're very cute and so much fun. And it was such a hit with our family. And when we lost our house in the fire many years ago, this was one of the things that um, did not get saved. It was like, just not in, yeah. We, we couldn't save it so he made me a new one and uh, so I have one to put away because it is kind of a special toy and it'll drive me crazy because it makes a noise when it goes on the hardwood floors but that's okay um, my cousin Bert made it for me and it was made with an awful lot of love and my if I ever have any little grandchildren but at least my my godchildren will enjoy playing with it when they're here. And hopefully there will be grandchildren or other children in my life who will play with it when they come to my house. But I just love it. And um, he he was so excited to give it to me. And I am just so thankful because it, I know it was made with love. And that's like all the things we make is pretty important, right? And you guys know me. Um, I have a big nostalgia. I don't live in the past. But I do love um, things with a story, like all kinds of things with a story. And this for sure has a story. And so I'm very happy to have the little wooden duck again. And I did some work and I enjoy So this is in typical fashion. I, I worked on Friday and Saturday. And um, Friday evening, I saw my native friend, Christelle. We didn't take a picture. And then on Saturday, when I was all done, I was at a an event and I packed up and um, it was around 5.30 or so. And I had talked to Nancy Wheeler from Knits of Happy. I was in Moncton and I said, hey, are you around Saturday evening? She said, yeah. And she said, you want to get together? So we had supper and we went out and we sat and we knit in the restaurant for quite a while. We had a lovely Thai meal and didn't take any pictures <laughs> we were so busy talking and chatting and and enjoying each other's company and then didn't take any pictures there either it did happen if, even if it's not on instagram it, it's very possible that it still happened and um yeah i i wasn't there very long because i had to be back for another event the following weekend so I think I left, um, I picked my dad's sister up in Quebec City and brought her with me. So I got to her place Tuesday evening. We left there Wednesday morning to New Brunswick. And um, I had Thursday to do some stuff with my mom, some of her running around. And Friday I had to go to my, do my event. And that was Friday and Saturday. And Sunday, I think I hung out with my parents. And Monday I... I called up one of my friends and said, hey, are you around? Can we do lunch? And she was available. So I'm so happy. My friend Faith, who um, I've talked about before. <coughs> and we had a lovely afternoon. And then uh, I had really not seen very much of my cousin that weekend at all. And so her and I um, hung out Monday evening and... Um, yeah, it was just nice. And I think Tuesday morning, I we turned around and left again. I can't remember if I left Tuesday morning or Wednesday morning. But anyways, I was back here by Thursday to go out and do another work event all over again on Friday. Which is how it works. Which is pretty typically how it works in my world. And, um, and that weekend, I think, was Father's Day weekend as well. So we had all the kids over. And, but on my way back, you guys know that I often um, do the, uh, use the Ravelry feature where you can plot yarn shops on your trip. And I try to stop at a different one every time. 
And um, one of the ones I was going to stop at had very restricted hours and I didn't get there in time. So I'll hopefully be able to get to them another time. And so I ended up going to Artists, Artists Anthropy, um, Crafters of Humanity, it says, Fiber Arts in uh, on Brock Street in Whitby. And that's their business card. And I'll link them down below. And I always do try to pick up a yarn. Now, this is not... Um, they didn't really have a lot that I was looking for that was in... Um, I was looking for DK skeins because I was looking for things to put in my Jethro. And I was looking for something that was a bit um, of a pop. And, but I did get this skein and it, I mean, it's not a local yarn or it is, um, Malabrigo Dos Tierras. I don't know how to say that. The colorway is flame and the composition is, I always find these labels hard to read, um, 50% merino, 50% baby alpaca. So, but I love the color. It's just a really nice reddish orange greens. So it'll be a good pop. I have to do my color planning for it because I really don't know what I'm going to do. But I picked that up. And then I, um, one of the things, and I don't know if I have it up here. I think it's in my other bag. One of the things we got in our, um, when we were on the cruise was a special, I don't have it in here. Um, it's downstairs. Um, a special knit pattern by um, Tracy Miller and it was gifted to us. So we got it in advance of the other people. And the, Jody had the sock sets that went with it in her shop. She had a shop update. So I had to buy it. And I haven't opened this package yet because I think it's always fun. I picked up a few, I picked up a few fun things. Um, This is, I don't know which, I don't know which sock set is the sock set for the socks, for the, anyways, I ordered one. A happy Place sock set. Let's see if we can figure out which one that is. I think it's this one. Yeah, that looks like it. So um, I have the Happy Place sock pattern, so I picked that up. It's a DK sock set in um, Citrin, Citrin, Big Apple, Sky High, uh, And I think these two are Chick Flick and Mayflowers. But those are going to be fun. I'm looking forward to doing those. And then I'm using the cheat sheet here. I got a hat kit, which is this. And these colorways are Indigo, Stiletto, Lemon, lemon Limey. So Indigo, this is Stiletto lemon limey and lilac ice and this is for one of um, Jody's patterns and then I got a rainbow set of DK minis a whole bunch of different colors which are fun because you know you have to make the shipping worthwhile and I got this set of it's a one of a kind I don't think it has a colorway uh, speckled 50 gram yarn set so in theory they're the same so I got 200 grams of this 
and it is 7525 high twist 50 grams is 212 liters so 424 per hundred so there's good meterage on them i could uh, probably do helical knitting with them i could do whatever i want with them right it's my yarn so i picked those up that was kind of fun and i got their card i love their new cards and i love their new logo so i will make sure to link them down below that was kind of cool and then i am doing another three cabled sweaters for my aunt to give to her grandchildren um she has two girls and one more boy. I already did one for one of the boys. And so I'm doing one of them in this vintage DK. And I don't know what the colorway is called, but it's this very pretty heathered purple and one in this very pretty heathered pink. And then one of the boys, I had gotten this um, Cascade 220 and then got it home and went... Okay, this isn't super wash, so probably not the best idea for, you know, preteen, early teenage boys. So, but I got this at Little Red Mitten. And while I was there, Pam from Little Red Mitten, um, and everyone was there, Pam and Jolyn and Jillian, and they all said, oh, it's fifth Saturday and they have a special deal when they have their fifth Saturdays where they have discounts and other exciting things. And, and then on top of that, Pam goes and I'm doing a trunk show cause I'm now dying yarn. So, you know, you always like to support your local people. So I, I went back and I bought so that, you know, like, this is the second time in like two weeks. And I picked up um, Remix Light to do a t-shirt. And I picked up the pink yarn for my daughter's um, Whippy Summer Shawl that we looked at earlier. And I picked up a skein of um, Pam's fingering weight yarn and Pam's um, brand is Firefly Haven Fibers and I got a skein of her fingering it was beautiful and um, I will insert a picture because Heidi's already received her birthday present and it went with Heidi's birthday present I also made Heidi a project bag and an emotional support chicken which is very cute which you'll see in the picture as well and I'll try and put it right in here somewhere and I picked up for myself um, this beautiful braid of fiber which is um, 9.5 micron superwash merino 100 grams and uh, the colorway is wavelength so I'm gonna hopefully get that spun up so that was pretty exciting and I was very happy um, to go on the Saturday and, you know, support my local yarn shop and for fifth Saturday, but also to support Pam in her new endeavor because she was very helpful. She's always very helpful when you're in the shop as they all are. So that was really nice. Anyways, I then, as I was thinking that probably non superwash yarn wasn't the best idea for a preteen teenage boy, young teen boy, um, I decided, okay, I can take that yarn, this beautiful color, which is probably only a number. I don't see a name on it, but it's this beautiful blue. Um, and I went, we do have a small yarn shop in really close to me. And they have a, they have limited things, but they do, one of the things they do carry is uh, Barocco Vintage. And so I picked this one up. 
because this is super wash and I just thought this was a better choice. So I have an extra sweater quantities of yarn in my life and you know, not the end of the world. So as I was knitting away on my daughter's um, shawl, I realized I'd done mine with 200 grams of yarn, both of mine, but I'd made hers wider. So 200 grams wasn't going to be long enough. So on Friday, just this past Friday, I went, okay, the wedding's in a week. I better go pick it up because Little Red Mitten's not, op I, we were busy Saturday and they're not open on Monday and Tuesday. And if I wait till Wednesday, that's getting tight. So I went back to the Little Red Mitten on Friday and picked up another skein of the pink yarn to make sure I had enough. And, you know, they were having their summer sale and... This gorgeous, I got a sweater's quantity of this gorgeous beauty. It's Wool Addicts Pride is the, the uh, you know, I don't know, the brand, the, the name by Lang. And it is... Uh, 100 grams, 280 meters, which I guess puts it in a, somewhere in a sport DK range. And the composition is 40% linen, 32% cotton, and 28% viscose. But it is gorgeous. Look at that color. And it was in the sale bin. Like You can't leave it in the store. It needs to go home with somebody. It might as well be me. Craziness. Craziness. I think I um have to put myself in yarn timeout because this is a crazy amount of yarn that is sitting here. And um, yes, I was on a cruise, which meant I bought more than I no normally would have. But I... And three sweater quantities aren't for me. They're... I'm knitting for my aunt. So that's... That's different, right? I got the pleasure of shopping for it and buying it. And I get the pleasure of knitting it. But it immediately leaves my house. So it doesn't become a garment in my house or stay part of my stash. So I think that's a reasonable thing to do. So that's all that's been going on in my world lately, which I know is kind of a lot. And uh, I'm sorry this is a little broke up and I will hopefully put in some explanation of why I'm wearing different clothes partway through. And uh, yeah, it's almost bedtime. And I think I'm going to have to spend at least part of tomorrow cleaning up this room because it's pretty disasterly. And since I'm almost done knitting all the things that I had on the go, and I do this, this is sort of how I work. I clear my whips and then I start over. But I think, which I showed you last time, I think this might be my next cast on. I think this is um, Yarn Indulgences Silk and Linen in the fingering weight. Yeah, not sure what I'm going to do. Maybe, uh, maybe a Tolsta or... Maybe a Tolsta tank. I just love these two colors. It just reminds me of like lemonade and blueberries or I don't know. I just love the two of them together. And I think they're going to be beautiful. I mean, I have quite a bit. I have um, eight, 980 yards. So that sh I should be able to make pretty much any stripey tank I want out of that. And I love knitting with this. It is such a nice yarn. I think that's going to be my next cast on. And maybe I have to do, maybe I have to do my grandson's Christmas sweater because he got the yarn. And my plan was to have it done for his birthday, but it didn't happen. So now I have, maybe should have it done for fall so he doesn't have to wait till Christmas to get the sweater. That would not be appropriate even if he is 13. So, well, I hope you are all um, having a great summer or winter, depending on where you live. I uh, hope that you all um, 
are enjoying whatever's on your needles or if you're taking a bit of a break over the summer or winter, whichever where you live, I get that. I This channel has grown a lot in the last little while and um, when I looked today we were almost at a thousand so I think in the next episode we might do a giveaway and I know, you know, in the grand scheme of um, knitting podcasts, discussions, whatever we want to call it. Um, my channel is kind of small, but um, I think we still have to mark the milestones. So hopefully we will get over that. Over we, We've hit a thousand a couple times and then we drop back one or two and go up one. So hopefully by next episode, we'll be firmly over a thousand and um, we'll do some sort of a celebration for that in the next episode. So take care everyone, do what brings you joy. If it isn't, don't feel bad if you frog it. And um, like, subscribe if you've hung around this long. Hopefully we're gonna get a chance to do a, a porch episode soon. Today I tried and the sound quality was so bad. It was so windy, it was awful. But um, yeah, by then my garden might be looking better too. It's looking a little neglected at the moment. Take care, everyone. Have fun. Check out the, all the pictures on Instagram. I'm going to list a bunch of other podcasters who, if you want to know more about the cruise, you can go check out their episodes. And until next time, thanks for watching. Bye.